we're going. Hi to all my youth based friends. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. We've got a really great project for you to do. Uh, we're going to be making uh, Japanese wind socks. This is the back of mine. Uh, there's the front. We're going to be using watercolors to paint with them today. You can also use markers to go back and add a little details. Just be creative when you're making this. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques. And then uh, when you're painting at home, you have to let it dry. And then when it dries, uh, I'll show you the second step, which would be gluing all this together in the materials that we're going to need. For the first step, what you'll need is a piece of scrap paper. Uh, it could be newspaper, anything that you have, a cardboard, uh, just to put down because this will bleed. It will make the colors uh, bleed through. Uh, you'll have your koi fish here and it's a color diffusing paper that just means it makes the colors bleed or soak through very easily and there's a couple little techniques you can do with that you have your watercolor and some water you can have brushes if you have something like an eyedropper you can use it you can use something like a spray bottle uh, anything that you have like that would be a great uh, asset for you to use so uh, a couple little things i'll show you first uh, since this is diffusing paper, you can just start off with a brush and water and you can add it. And as you can see, uh, when I'm using newspaper, it's transparent when it goes through and you can see it. This just makes it easier for the colors you use to bleed through. And if I put it there, you see it kind of explodes and expands across the paper. Uh, the wetter your paper is, the lighter your colors are going to be. So it may take you a couple of sessions to get the colors as bright as you want them. I would suggest you paint it and let it dry and then see what you have. You can use something like this, which is your water squirter. And I'll come over here to a dry part. You can put that down and then you can come over it like that. It also makes the water diffuse the color and everything expands and you can see it's still doing it. You can add some more and you can see it keeps going. Uh, or you can just do just a regular paint technique where you just take your brush, come over here and paint on your koi fish. Again, uh, the wetter your paper is usually, the uh, lighter your colors are gonna be. With mine, it took I'll switch this out already. It took me about two or three sessions to let it dry. Then I'd come back and add a few little paintbrush strokes or I'd come back and make the colors a little bit bolder. So you layered the colors on top of each other to yep. make them really bright and colorful. Yeah, but I wanted them to pop out when they did that. So uh, how many times it takes you to paint to get the colors you want is totally up to you. But once you're finally done with it and you're okay with the way it looks like, you want to let it dry all the way. I would say probably takes a couple hours. If you put it out in the sun in the afternoon, it wouldn't take very long for it to dry. So you want to do a couple of things when you get to this point. You're going to have this piece of white paper that's going to come with your kit. You'll have string and a pair of scissors, glue, and if you have a hole punch, you can use a hole punch and a clip. It could be a clothespin or a bulldog clip like this or a butterfly clip. So. What we do is this first. We're going to take this. We'll put a bead of glue on it. And we'll put it right here where the mouth is. And of course, there's a little bit of that goes over. And you just want to trim that off. And this could be a great place for parents to help, huh? Absolutely. And if you're not that great with scissors, you can obviously ask your parents, or sometimes parents will say, no, you can't use scissors on your own. So just trim that off. Then uh, you have to be very careful where you put the glue at this point. You want to start right here where the white paper is. You you're gluing do... right now on the bottom of your fish, right? I am because... Uh, of the way my colors bled through. Mm -hmm. On the other side, my colors seem to uh, be the best on that side, so I left them there. 
So you want to do it just across the top of the fish until you get to, I guess, uh, the fin there. And then you skip all the way over here and you do the back side of this one right here. The tail. The tail. So you, you have that there. Then you want to fold your guy in half. very carefully and right there across the seam where you just put the glue you want to just lightly run your finger across it line it up mm -hmm. and the same thing at the bottom here now of course this is going to be wet so again you probably want to have another piece of paper I just have our tables here at the museum and then, I saw a little bit of glue oozing out that might happen you just wipe that off absolutely right? okay. Then right here where his mouth is, I just take my clip or clothespin and I pin him there. And when he hangs, he's going to hang like this. And of course, there, you'll see some parts that are cut out on your koi fish. But it'll hang like that. One last thing that you want to do is take your hole punch, punch a couple of holes. And then you can take we're it. planning on sending you guys something that's already got the hole punch in it but that's the purpose of the hole punch yep so you can line it up and and what's the reason for the binder clip binder clip just pinches them together there and keeps it uh, keeps them staying there and it probably take just about for while it's drying yeah right? while it's drying it'll probably take about 24 hours to dry all the way so after he dries, you can hang him up. So when it's finished drying, you take the clip off and it just stays put on it. It should own. stay put on its own. Right. And uh, you can hang these on your porch. You can hang them in a tree. Obviously, if you hang it in a tree, you don't want to hang it there for long uh, because of uh, storms and rain. Yeah, if it rained on watercolor, it would be a mess, yeah, wouldn't it? total mess. And again, this is a good part to get adults to help you with, to tie the string up. And Mr. Mm. Morgan, you told me these fish, uh, these koi fish were from Japan. They are from Japan, and they would have these in celebrations. I believe they said it was Boys Day. Like a festival like or something? Like a festival, absolutely, and they'd make these, and they'd probably make them out of paper, just like these are. I heard it called a wind sock. Wind sock, yeah. Why do you think it's called a wind sock? Because when the wind blows, the the fish will blow with it and it kind of puffs up like a sock. Ooh, right. cool. So, All just right. to show you here, you have your string, a uh, plan with an adult where to put it. You see his mouth is open there mm -hmm. and his body's open. Uh, he needs to dry, obviously. So after he dries, he'll open up a little bit better and the wind will fly through there and it'll look like your fish mm -hmm. is floating in the air. That looks like a fun party. Yeah, it does. So when you're done, you kind of have a 3D fish and he's open through the ends here, the bottom of his tail, mm -hmm. through his mouth. Great. Okay? Yeah. All right, so I hope you have fun doing this. I had fun making this and I hope you do too. Just be creative with the painting part. Uh, bright colors work great. Like I said, you can use the watercolors, but also when you're done with watercolors, you can come back in with some markers and add some other details. I like yours. Looks a little bit like a rainbow fish. Yeah, I wanted to have something like a, a rainbow kind of trout thing, so okay. I was thinking about that. Yep. All right, bye, friends. Bye. I'll see y'all later.